Hi, um, I'm Geeky Tim, and uh, this is Rakantha, uh, also known as Mike and Tim, and I'll let you guess which one's which. Okay, so we're going to talk about uh, making of Pi Wars. Hopefully, if we've got some sound on the laptop, this will work. <laughs> Hopefully. Do we have sound on the laptop, by the way? In a bit. Oh, press the wrong button. Have we got sound on the laptop? Sorry for the delay. The volume is up. We're deep on a straight HDMI, not keyboard. Play for a straight HDMI. Ah, show me through the Yeah, it's round here, is it? Bear with us. <laughs> yeah. Right, with any luck, this will work. If it doesn't, I'll talk over it. No, it doesn't. Oh, I'll make it work because I like the music. <laughs> it's a good job to test this beforehand, isn't it? Yeah. Not. Okay. Uh, we want uh, sound settings, don't we? And if this doesn't work, we'll talk over it. Over to you, Tim. Okay, so uh, Mike and I um, started fairly near the beginning of uh, when the Raspberry Pi came out. We started Cam Jam, which is the Cambridge Raspberry Jam. Um, we're both both IT people. I work in uh, I'm a performance uh, architect. I work in the performance of computer systems. Uh, Mike's a uh, web developer. And um, the Raspberry Pi came out and it just loved the idea of it. And we wanted to get people um, interested in it. I had young kids at the time and I wanted them to be interested in it. They're not, but anyway. Mike? Yeah, so we set up CamGen and soon afterwards um, we started getting um, bigger in terms of the jam. We moved to a new venue and we started getting about 180 people each time. And Tim said to me, do you, we, we, need to do, we need to do something else. So, he said to me, do you like Robot Wars? And I said, of course I like Robot Wars. Yeah. And, and he said, could we do something like that with the Raspberry Pi? However, um, because people are going to make, um, we're aiming a lot, mainly at children, um, but also adults, but we didn't want them to be destructive, so we had to came up, come up with a different format. And um, so we um, started thinking about it. Um, getting ourselves some experience in the Raspberry Pi. Um, we started doing some workshops at, at the jams, and um, uh, I knew absolutely nothing about electronics at the time, so I decided, um, well, we decided to do some workshops, and then we were asked to actually bring out the Educate. Um, so we did. We came up with Educate 1, Educate 2, which is for the sensors, and Educate 3, which is our robot. Um, we don't actually make any money out of this. This is all simply to fund the events we run, uh, which is Pi Wars and, and Cam Jam. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, we put 
ran the idea of, 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 of Pi Wars, or we had, didn't have a name at the time, and people said, yeah, yeah, they'd like to do it. So we thought, um, okay, well, put our money where our mouth is and we'd, we'd, we'd run one. So we hit 2014. Now, our jams at that time were um, running at the Institute of Astronomy in Cambridge. And we thought, well, we're not going to muck about trying to find a different venue, so we'll just stay there and we'll try and do it on a small scale to start with. Um, so we came up with the idea of seven challenge courses. And then seven. Tim. Seven. Was seven. seven. Yep. Yes, it was seven. And the seven was because we went around the venue, looked around and said, right, we could fit one there, one there, one there, and one there. Came out to seven. And then we thought, oh, we've got seven courses. We've actually got to build the things now. So Tim threw his collection of traditional tools at it. <laughs> yes. And we came up with the following courses. We started out with a line follower. I mean, this is, line follower is the typical robot uh, event that, uh, autonomous event that people start with. Um, simply use a, uh, um, a detect for light and dark and follow the dark. And we wanted a mixture of autonomous and remote controlled um, challenges because we wanted people to be able to create a robot that could do both types of challenges. Another one we came up with was called Proximity Alert, where you used a distance sensor and you had to get as close to the wall as possible. And we thought, okay, people will get sort of 10 centimeters. And, yeah. and then our judge said, okay, I'll bring my digital calipers along. And they were needed. And when they needed. Um, That's we had, another autonomous event, by the way. Yep. We had Robot Golf, which was a remote controlled one. And we had the straight line speed test, which has stood the test of time. We're still doing it. <laughs> That was either autonomous or um, remote controlled. You got more points if you did it autonomously. So it's a seven meter track. Uh, the three point turn was an autonomous event. Um, you had to basically drive up to the lines, back up, turn, and return to the same square. So if you can see it on the right hand side, um, there's a little green box that they had to return to. So this was to test uh, maneuverability and controllability of the, the robot. And then we had um, the um, only, hopefully, less destructive robot on robot event, which was Sumo, um, which was a bit of a miscalculation at the time because the first um, one was a, an enormous Playmobil um, pirate ship against the smallest robot in the competition by Brian. <laughs> Um, we also wanted to have an obstacle course in there just, just to have additional challenges. This was remote controlled as well. Um, so we just had various mini, mini obstacles for people to be able to get over. And if anybody here remembers the first season of Robot Wars, the one with uh, Jeremy Clarkson, um, that had the element of an obstacle course at the beginning of it. Then we came to our first mistake. Ooh, yes. That was horrible. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, being a performance uh, um, uh, uh, engineer, I like to things to work well and to look good and to have good quality. So I thought, yeah, we'll have co quality. I then spent all day, I mean, all day uh, on the day, missing all the events and actually looking at everybody's code and giving them a mark on various categories. And that's a big mistake, big mistake. Um, we also then made our second mistake, which was to leave all the totting up of the scores until the prize giving, Ooh, which goodness, ran to about two and a half hours, I seem to remember the first one. Yeah, it was all manual then. <laughs> yep. um, yeah, we, we uh, managed to pick up some sponsors and we had prizes and that was, that was terrific because we, we reached out to the, the Pi um, business community and said, can we have some free stuff? And a lot of them said yes. So um, at the end of that event, we said, would you want to do another one? Hoping they'd say no, and a big roar went up, saying, yes, yes, you've got to have another one. So, yeah, okay. So that was December 2014. We decided to do the next one in December 2015. Um, and by that time, Mike and I had run um, the uh, third birthday party for the um, Raspberry Pi Foundation. And um, we'd used the William Gates building and got to know the people there. And um, it's a much better building, much bigger for what we needed. And uh, they said, yes, we can run Pi Wars there. Um, by this time, Tim had acquired a 3D printer, which meant that we could do a lot more um, intricate stuff with the courses. 
And we also realized that the courses looked pretty dull the first year, so we just added a lot of paint. A lot of paint. Um, we, cha we changed some challenges. We kept others. Um, we kept the, cha the obstacle course, but painted it and changed the challenges. We had Skittles. Now, that was pretty much how we expected Skittles to go until this robot came along. That was spinning something like 70 miles an hour. Apparently, they had to put Kevlar um, string around the uh, tires um, of the, the spinny thing because um, they kept flying apart. Um, and that actually got us, um, gave us our first glimpse of how en um, uh, imaginative and how much engineering goes into these tiny robots for this event. Um, just exactly what we were, were hoping. Um. Then we had our line follower course, and we thought, this will be fantastic. We'll get it printed on vinyl. Doesn't yeah. work. It sort of worked until you had a wide array of line followers, and then it picked up all the green on the side. This is um, one of our competitors, Dave Pride, trying to get his robot just to follow a line. We kept the three-point term because um, it actually worked quite well. This is Metabot showing off. The cheers went on for some time. Um, <laughs> we also changed our robot versus robot um, challenge to something called Pie Noon, oh. which you may have seen about. <laughs> that was obnoxious music. <laughs> And out of that has come uh, MicroPie Noon, uh, which is run by Brian here and a few other um, um, make spaces and uh, uh, jams. Um, the reason for Pie Noon is that um, the sumo, big robot, little robot, don't fight well together. So uh, we wanted something less destructive and um, a little more even. So they have a, basically have a, a balloon on them and a pin and they've got to pop it. And at EMF camp this year, Brian's brought along his Mega Pie Noon, which is significantly bigger. And at the end, um, Brian just wants to say something right at the end of the talk, uh, because there's competition going on. Um, in 2007, oh yes, we, we skipped a year because we suddenly realized that December was just about the worst time you could possibly pick for schools. Yeah, because we wanted, and one of the main reasons for doing it, and one of the main reasons for the Raspberry Pi is um, uh, for schools, for education. And um, we weren't getting as many schools in as we wanted. We had one or two, not brilliant. So um, we uh, uh, looked at the dates and said, well, actually, from September to December, not enough time. It's not enough time for most people. So, um, yeah, we changed it to, to, to April. Um, so hence why 2016 wasn't there. 2017. And um, we had so many applications, we were actually able to split it into two days. Saturday was the schools, and Sunday was beginners, intermediate, and advanced robots. Um, previous years, the first year we had done it on cost, uh, split the robots on cost, so you got those below £70, pounds, 75, 75 yeah. pounds, and above £75. Pounds. Um, that was hard to judge, a bit hard to judge. Second year was on size. And um, yeah, it was okay. But um, looking at the, uh, uh, the the robots and the competitors, it was clear that uh, a different system was needed, and we came up with this. By this time, Tim had acquired his shed. Now, when I say shed, it's not quite accurate. It's a hut. It's a log cabin, and he'd also acquired just snuck into the corner a laser cutter. Yeah, yeah. Well, I bought the la had to buy the sh um, hut eight, as I call it, um, because of the laser cutter. It was so big, couldn't fit anywhere else. So that's where I do uh, a lot of my work. So, uh, 2017, um, we did a lot of laser cutting, but he still kept going on the traditional tools. Yep, because there's no substitute. Um, we decided just to change the challenges again, and we came up with the minimal maze, which was autonomous.
Now, that is one of the only ones that got round complete. It is actually much harder than you expect um, to do that because you don't know the surface when you, um, you start off. Yes, we've got the colours, but yeah, it was hard. We also added a challenge called Slightly Deranged Golf, um, which we actually got some AstroTurf for, which was, which was quite fun. Yes, and that's also the course that I broke my ribs on by falling over on it. So you can see all it was was a horseshoe, but you got penalties for going in the sand and in the water, and you had to get it past this windmill at the end. We kept the line follower um, based on a fairly reasonable design, we thought. Yeah, except, and we got it specially printed, and um, we thought, well, okay, we'll go for Matt, see whether that works, and no, it didn't again. Because we changed venues, um, we were able to have a, an obstacle course that was much larger, so we doubled the size. And changed... And changed all the obstacles. We inherited a... Um, well, not inherited, we had made for us a turntable by Pyborg and Mod My Pie, which is fantastic. Many thanks to them. And we also acquired a wonderful head judge. Dr. <laughs> Lucy Rogers. <laughs> uh, this was actually, um, she had started Robot Wars by then, um, and she uh, kindly um, said yes to when we asked her to judge for us, so we got to know her in, in the meantime because we were doing some other events and uh, got to know her, so it was wonderful to get her along as the hedge judge. We managed to pick up even more sponsors and we needed them because we had the two days to cover for prizes and that sort of thing, um, and we had trophies made, um, 3D printed by Tim, um, and they were, they were terribly cute in person, they were most mind-bogglingly cute. And then we came to last year, no not last year, this year. This yes, year. this year, 2018. So that's the fourth year we've been doing it. We changed out the challenges again, just a few of them. And we included the duck shoot. And we thought, OK, we'll provide balls for people to roll towards the targets. But what if they could add, a ta add an attachment to be able to shoot the targets? And that's what some people did. And Nerf guns were really popular. And very good. Um, we wanted to eat um, each year. We do try and change the challenges, but um, we saw the, that the robots were getting much better. So we wanted to challenge people even more. So we came up with the idea with somewhere over the rainbow. Um, basically, you have uh, four coloured balls sitting in the corner of a black course, and the robots have to identify the balls, approach them, stop, and then go to the next one in the right order. We, some had more success than others, it's fair to say. <laughs> this one got very, very lucky. This was one of the um, best runs of the day. Slightly sped up. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I mean, the, yes, um, that's um, OpenCV, most of them using, a lot of them, not all of them. Um, but, it, yeah, an extra challenge, and uh, we hope to go continue that way. Um, redesigning the obstacle course. No, we didn't actually put those lines around there. There was one uh, competitor last year um, who decided that um, he wanted to do everything autonomously, not just the autonomous events. So um, he followed that line, and I think he did pretty well, didn't he? Yeah, I can't remember actually how well he did on this, but it, it was quite interesting watching them put the line down and getting closer and closer to the time when they actually had to go. <laughs> Um, we had some help with this one this year. We had a, a block-moving puzzle challenge um, that Brian Cortile kindly did for us. I think this is Billy doing this one, isn't it? It is. Yeah, it's, it's the one that's running on the Brian's, floor here. Brian's son, Billy, piloting the um, robot around the course. And you notice that rock, paper, scissors there. We added it the, la the year before and thinking, uh, I can't think of what to put in there. Let's put something simple. And uh, it wasn't. A lot of robots got stuck on the paper, surprisingly. For Pi Noon, we um, added a pyramid in the centre with some pins. It's just to make it extra difficult. And we also thought, with pins, we really ought to put walls on it. We didn't the first year, and then we suddenly thought, actually... No one got hurt, though. Yes, and also, because we had this um, autonomous robot that was doing everything autonomously, we thought, the chances are it's just going to go 
Straight off in the distance. And also it helped him uh, not get confused by the colour. So um, I, uh, we put that on for him. This was the final. Um, we, ad- we added three balloons this time, just to make it slightly more difficult for everybody. And now we come to next year. Next year, yes. We've um, uh, crazily said we'll do another one. Um, it was about two months after the last one. And um, we thought, no, no, never again, never again. But yeah, yeah, we're doing it again. So 2019, um, next year is the anniversary of the first landing on the moon. And uh, so we're going to celebrate that with um, a, a theme this year. So it's um, uh, a space theme, basically. We've got the Hubble Tel- Telescope Nebula Challenge, over the rainbow, um, Asteroid Field, which is a maze, totally different from last year's, uh, Blast Off, which is the straight-ish line speed course. Very-ish. Um, very-ish, yes. Um, Pi Noon again. Um, space Invaders, um, that's... Are we saying what that one is? Yeah, I think we are. Okay, that's basically duck shoot, but it's not ducks this time because you don't have ducks in space. Not often, anyway. Um, Spirit of Curiosity. That is going to be where you um, drive from one side of the course, uh, pick up some um, samples, and drive it back to the base so that you can deliver them back to the Earth. Over a variety of terrain which we've yet to build, so that could be interesting. And the final one is the Apollo 13 obstacle course which will again feature complete, some new obstacles, some existing ones, and we've got ideas on that. Yeah, haven't built so, them yet. So 2019 um, will be the 30th and 31st of March in Cambridge. Um, the closing date for applications, because everybody has to apply in order to get into the competition, and then we look at how many we've got and try and figure out which ones have got the best chance of succeeding and actually getting to the competition. Now, last year we had about 150 applica- ap- applications for, um, for 76 places, um, which meant we did have to actually uh, disappoint a lot of teams, uh, disappoint even some teams that had competed previously. It is a shame, but we have to bring in, continue to bring in um, new teams. Uh, at the bottom, uh, doing the beginners and new schools, um, simply because um, we, we, we want to spread it. We don't want to just keep it to the same people every time. So um, we do need you to apply, need you to think, think about applying. Um, you've got until, as you can see there, until the end of March to actually uh, no, 23rd get them competing. September. 23rd of September. No, 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 not to apply, but to actually compete. So you've got a while to make it, but apply before that. You don't have to come have your design now. Um, you just have to say, right, what are you thinking of doing? How are you going to do it? Your team make up that sort of thing, whether you're a beginner, intermediate, advanced, or a school. And we've committed to reading absolutely everything on your application form, every single one, no matter how long it is. And yeah, the more information, the better. There may be beer involved on that night. Just a little. So um, that's it for the presentation, really. Um, if you want to find out more, come and speak to us afterwards. We've got some leaflets to give you just to remind you. Um, or go to the website, which is piewars.org. Um, have we got time for any questions? Has anybody got any questions? No. No. In that case, oh, we have got one. We have got one. Hi. Um, I got a lot of questions. I normally mentor kids to learn about robotics and stuff. So what about, I mean, the kid's going to enter PyWords, for example. What about mentoring? Yes, we have, um, on the application form, there's a tick box for, yes, I need some mentoring, and yes, I can be a mentor. And then it's a case of matching up, trying to match up geographically where you can. Um, Whereabouts are you from? Cambridge. Oh, excellent. In that case, it shouldn't be a problem because we have quite a few from Cambridge. Any more? Was there one over here? No? Just waving. Okay. (laughs) Okay, then. Um, I think Brian wanted to uh, say something. He's running the um, Mega Pi Noon today um, with some very large robots that he's built. Um, so, Mega Pine Noon is over by the where the blacksmith is. 
Um, it's free to play, and we'll be starting at about 3.30. Uh, welcome to come along and have a go at some driving some large robots. So, thank you. Thank you very much.